In a recent video, we saw how MCP works and how to set up a simple MCP server and client locally. Both processes run on the same host machine and use the standard input and output streams to communicate. Today, we are going to unlock MCP true power. Remote servers via server sent events. A local MCP server only provides tools and resources for clients that run on the same machine. But with a remote server, any client around the world can get access to those tools. So I will show you how you can extend an existing FastAPI server with an MCP server application that works over SSE. Let's go. So first of all, a quick reminder on MCP. You have a server that run either locally or remotely, and you have a client. The server has a few tools exposed and other resources. In that case, it has access to an SQLite tool, so it can run um, SQL commands on the SQLite database. In the client, you have typically a chat application that has access to the MCP client and some intelligence, so an LLM. What happens is the user writes a query. So it asks something to the, to the agent. The agent then looks in the MCP client for tools that it can use to solve the task. So here it has to create a table. Now, it will be able to understand how the tool works and ask the client to perform the action. So the client makes a call to the server to ask for the, the action to be executed. Here it will execute an SQLite commands on the disk, so the data will change. It will answer back with the result, so uh, success, the table is created. And finally, the answer goes back to the AI agent to be able to make the final answer to the user. And here you get your next message. So this, that's how MCP works. And today we'll see how we can configure a client and a server to connect using SSE, so using a remote server instead of running both processes on the same machine. And they will use SSE over HTTP, so you can run the server anywhere in the world and the client will be able to access it. Okay, so now you might think, why do we need server sent events? Why can't we just use simple HTTP request to implement the MCP protocol? So as you might know, the MCP protocol is a bit more complex than um, just making client to server request. Sometimes the server needs the ability to send data to the client without any interaction from the client in the first place. If you use HTTP, um, simple HTTP request, you always need the client to make first a request to the server, and then the server can send data in response. But with server sent events, the server is not required to receive a request first. It's a kind of long-lived connection that allows the server to push data whenever it needs to. Okay, so enough theory, let's dive into the implementation. So, we first create a server.py script that will contain the code for the MCP server. And as you can see, the first, the first thing we do is we import FastAPI and FastMCP. We use the FastMCP library, which is really similar to uh, fast API to declare tools and uh, expose them to the clients using the, the MCP server. So we create an MCP application and we create a first tool. So it's a really simple tool, get weather that will uh, return the weather for a city. And here for simplicity, it just returns that the city is sunny. So quick and simple example. Then we create our fast API application. It's to showcase that you can really uh, merge both together and have benefits of both. So you can have your REST endpoints and your MCP tools in the same server. Here, I create the app. I then create a route, uh, just a test route. So it's uh, on the path test and it just returns a JSON with a message called uh, hello world. Finally, I use the app from uh, FastAPI and I mount to the slash endpoint the SSC app. So from the, SS, from the MCP, sorry, I get the SSC app using this method and 
everything is configured for you. So at that moment, you have a server that has fast API routes. So the, the rest endpoints that you typically have in a fast API application. And you have all your tools exposed for clients to consume. We have a server. So now we need to build a simple client to uh, test our server, interact with it, and uh, invoke the tool getWeather. So we create an asynchronous main function, and this function will start by creating an SSC client that we import from the MCP library. We just specify the URL of our server. Now it's localhost 8000 and the pass, which is a slash SSC for the MCP, MCP tools and uh, sorry for the MCP server. Then we create a client session and this session is important because we will use it to discover tools and invoke the tools. So here, we first await uh, the initialize method, which is important to initialize the protocol. And then we send the ping just to test that everything works. The next step is to get the list of tools and display the tools. So we see it works. And uh, then we can call our getWeather function here. So at this point, I print the output of the tool and we should see the weather is sunny in Tokyo. And finally, I make a call to the fast API server on the test, the test pass to show you that it, it works. Uh, both works in parallel on the same server. Now let's run everything and see if it works. So you can run um, the server using UV run UV cron server app to run the server in the first uh, in the first place. And then you can run the client by simply running uh, UV run the client.py. All the code will be on GitHub. And as you can see, we connected successfully to the remote server. We get here the description of the tool, so the name and the description. We have our tool call here, and we get the answer. So the weather in Tokyo is sunny, uh, super simple. And we see that the FastAPI app works um, as expected because we can make a restful call and get our answer. So now you know how to create a remote MCP server. It opens your server to the world where anybody can use your tools by using their clients such as ChatGPT Desktop, Cloud Desktop, or any programs running an LLM. Also now you understand a crucial feature of MCP, sharing. Using remote servers, you can connect to a large ecosystem of APIs and control them using your favorite LLM. See you in the next one.